Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to the uh, first of a four-part series on PHP. Um, being, this is Thomas Beebe um, from Advanced Data Tools. For some reason, I'm back to stuff. Um, and so I wanted to welcome you to it. We're going to start here in just a moment, um, making sure where the recording is going. Uh, this will be recorded. So if there are any parts you miss or anybody else that you feel that you um, think should listen to it, they will be available. The recordings will be available on our website within a couple of days after um, this is actually done. So thank you for being on and going to get started. Um, so just a little bit about me. Um, Um, I've been working with advanced data tools for the last, over 10 years. I've been working with Informix for just as long. Um, I've been working with PHP for about nine years now. So I started out in one of the early versions and have been working up and actively developed in the, the latest and greatest of the um, language. Uh, I do a fair amount of work with application development, DBA work, uh, sysadmin, I, I, I wear many hats, um, and they largely come together with, with this kind of environment. Um, so a little bit about this webcast. Um, we're gonna, we have four uh, webcasts that we're gonna be doing. The first one obviously today is getting started with PHP and getting it playing nicely with Informix. Um, April 22nd, we're going to cover data structures, objects, functions, database access, going into some of the, the, the core principles and core writing code in PHP. Let's see if the full screen is going to play nicely now. Just cut out on me. Um, so we're going to be doing that. On uh, May 20th, we're going to be start getting into actual web development where we are um, going to deal with creating simple forms, getting into the methodology and the actual technical behind the scenes of how web pages actually work and how then you write dynamic ones. Um, and then on June 17th, we're going to kind of put it all together, actually put together from the ground up, how do you put together an application in PHP? Which the fact that this is such a quick to develop language shows you the fact we can actually do that in an hour time frame. Time frame. Um, please make sure to register for each of them individually. Just go to advancedstatetools.com for the uh, links to register. Um, we should have the registration links up shortly if they're not up already. Um, just they are considered separate uh, WebEx sessions, so you do need to do them separately. Um, thank you all for being on. point where of course in the in the test it worked fine and currently it has stopped working uh, through WebEx so a little bit about PHP um, it is, stands for PHP Hypertext Preprocessor. The, the, the open source community loves their um, recursive acronyms. Uh, started in 95, Perl scripts, they rewrote it in C in 97. Um, then PHP 3 came out in 98. If you are working with old code, you may find some PHP 3 code sitting out there. It is largely compatible with the newer versions, but you'll, you will find some places where you have headaches. Um, Four came out in 2000. I actually still find quite a few places that are running um, PHP 4. And then five came out in 2004 and has been regularly updated since with all kinds of new features. Um, why PHP is actually interesting, why you want to, why you may want to use PHP in your organization, is 
largely due to um, a couple of nice factors about it. The first one, it's open source. So everything out there with it is available to go view and even suggest changes in the code if you're a C developer. Um, they are happy to receive outside, uh, they have a very nice change process and if you have outside suggestions you want to include, um, they will certainly listen to you on it. Um, it's free for use. That includes commercial. You can package this up and include it with a product. You can use it in-house. You can use it for a public website with no charge. Um, there are certainly companies that will offer support if you want it um, for a fee, but you don't have to take it. Um, it will run on almost anything. You can compile it on just about any Unix. Uh, it comes bundled in just about every Linux distribution. Um, it will run on just about any web, attached to just about any web browser out there. Um, the development time is, it's very fast development time. Um, I found from personal experience and from discussing with other developers, it generally takes about half the time to develop as a lot of the other major languages out there, especially things like running um, whole websites in Java. Actually, in some cases, uh, comparing notes, uh, up to, you know, one-tenth the time that some of the larger web uh, applications take with Java. Um, flexible coding styles. Uh, you'll hear people say negatives about PHP. This is one of them. Um, if you write in a language such as Java or Python, it is very, very structured as to how you lay out your code, how you um, actually put your uh, code together. PHP does not do this. It has grown and expanded and will let you write code just about any way you want to. Whether you are a top-down person, you're coming, you know, writing it almost like basic, you're writing it like Go, you can do that. If you are writing it in a purely functional way such as C, you can do that. If you're more of an object-oriented person, you can write it all with objects. There are lots of different ways to code it. Um, that means that it is very easy to adapt it to your coding styles, your organizations, the downside is it means that if you don't have coding standards for your organization, you may have code that is all over the place for ways it is written and how it is put together. So that, that's the biggest advice I can say. If you're bringing it into your organization, put together standards and make sure all of your developers follow a standard set of coding policies and even use the same framework if possible. Um, there are lots of support options out there. Um, which is always nice to have. Uh, there are companies such as ours that will actually come do so direct support on an application level, and there are larger companies like Zen, who is one of the major developers of it, who if you're having a core problem with language, you can pay a company like that that will actually go and do a language modification for or fix to the, the PHP code base itself for you. Um, it scales really well. It's fast. I mean, it is not quite as fast as PRC, but in most times that I've done benchmarks, it is, for, for many common tasks, you know, just a slight percentage slower. It is not. It is a very, very fast language. You don't have a startup overhead. A lot of things can be cached. There are things you can make it even faster with. Okay, run methods. This is how do you actually run a PHP script. The first one is the CLI, the command line. It comes with a binary to do that. Um, so it's there w available on Windows as well. So all you have to do is you can run a script. You can use this as shell scripting, which is really nice for some people like myself who write web pages, but also then write um, server level applications and scripts. And you can actually throw your PHP scripts in, uh, you know, and then run them just like you do your shell scripts or maybe your Perl scripts or what have you. Um, you can do it as a web module. Uh, they have you can include it for Apache, for IIS, for WebSphere, iPlanet, LightHTTP. You kind of get the idea. It's available for just about every web server out there. Um, one other way you can run it is through pure CGI. So if you don't have root access to the box to be able to um, actually compile and, and include a module into the web server itself, uh, you can go and actually run it as a CGI program and run scripts that way. There's a little bit of an overhead involved with it, but this way you can run it as a non-privileged user. A um, few installation notes. Um, most Linux uh, distributions have it in their PHP in their package repository. Uh, Windows installers are very, very easy. It's just a few clicks and you're up and running. Um, 
you, it'll compile cleanly on just on Unix systems and Windows. That used to be a bigger deal. It is the the pre-made distribution versions are usually good enough that you shouldn't need to compile it from source these days. Um, but you can, and if you're running on something like Solaris or AIX that may not have a native distri um, a native package available, you may need to build it from source. It's not that painful. It does take a little bit of time. It's kind of a standard package if you need to do that. Um, okay, just a little bit. So now you've got you've installed PHP. It'll tie it directly into Apache. Most people do run it as Apache. Um, this is where the acronym LAMP came from. It's Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP. I do know there may be some non-Informix people on the call. Most of what we're going to be covering is Informix related. However, there's nothing that cannot be done here with just using a different database. Um, but LAMP is sort of the standard Linux stack these days. Uh, we're hoping to get more Informix in there as well because it runs beautifully with it. Just takes a little bit to get there. I'm going to go into the Informix install in a minute, but I want to cover the basics of what a PHP script actually looks like. It is pretty simple. You start out with uh, the beginning, which is your um, less than and question mark, and then PHP. Some of the old scripts may have PHP 3. Um, it just if you see that at the top, it just it gives you some pause that you may have some code you need to rewrite. If you just have the less than question mark, that's called the short open tag. If you are writing something in house, that can be fine to run. If you are putting something out there for public distribution, always use less than question mark PHP to start the script. Just some people do not enable the what's called short open tag in the settings, and it so it won't actually run it. You'll just get the source code sent back to you. The next part is actual commands. This is the simple echo hello world. I'm sure all of you have written it in some language and it probably looks exactly like that, especially if you come from C. And then end, end of script, which is question mark greater than. Um, another thing you can do, because PHP is a web-based language, if you're writing HTML, and this is probably really interesting to anyone that may have written Cold Fusion because this does work similarly, you can embed PHP into the middle of a, a and basically pure HTML code. So what you had here is you have the um, HTML body, hello world. You know this is the standard start of a, a HTML script. Then you actually have short open tag. I know um, echo and then the variable hello world end tag. So what it will actually do there is it'll print out to the browser, hello world, new line, prints out the value of the hello world variable, and then goes back to printing pure HTML. So the only part that will actually get processed dynamically is that little tag. It's quick, it's easy to embed, especially if you're just filling in a couple little dynamic pieces into an otherwise static page. Um, there is also the cheat method you will run into occasionally, which is a short open tag equals and then a variable. What that does is it just does a printout to the screen in that point of the code of that variable. Yeah, I'm not going to cover that, but if you run into it somewhere in your, your world, that's what you will see. So just a couple more basic scripts here, print hello world. Um, and then a for loop, which uh, you see here, it's for x, all variables start with a dollar sign, x equals zero, x is less than five, x plus plus. Ever written a C for loop, JavaScript, any C-based language, this should look familiar to you. Um, you notice that we are able to embed the variable directly into the string to print out here. Every command ends with a semicolon. Um, the for loop itself is uh, put in braces and then the, the end tag. I'm going to pop over to the shell uh, I have up here to prove, you know, nothing up my sleeve. This isn't, you know, nothing is fake here. I will also mention just in time to get up and running, um, I rebuilt this uh, host system to run the test PHP on. It took me, not counting the, the download of the OpenSUSE, it took me 25 minutes from start of blank virtual image. Um, I'm running this on VMware, from blank virtual image up and running with PHP, talking to Informix, 
and everything and working with Apache. 25 minutes total, including operating system install, Informix install, everything else. So it is a quick language. Um, so I have a few samples here. I, we will put these out on the website after the call when we include the uh, PowerPoints and the replay of the whole presentation. And there is the Hello World PHP file. I just have a couple of samples here. We'll be going into far more direct code um, for the next webcast. All this is is a very simple two-line Hello World. Um, see, we start uh, have the open PHP tag. Uh, we have one Hello World where we have everything embedded. The second Hello World, and this is just a, uh, a feature of the language, and actually a lot of C languages do this, where we have Hello World and then we're concatenating the two strings, the first one being Hello World and the second one being New Line. Um, one other feature here is our um, nature of the language. The first uh, part of the string, the Hello World, is in single quotes. That means it's a literal string. The second part is in double quotes, so it means it's processed so that slash n is turned into a new line. Um, so we just concatenate the two. And again, on Linux or any kind of Unix, the PHP binary is just called PHP. And we just have two copies of hello world there. Um, same with the for loop. Where PA, I don't have an end tag on this, that's okay. The end tag is not required. I should have added it here and will before I put these out. But it's not required. The script knows that the script is finished and won't return any problems with it. Um, but what it's doing here is we just uh, take it, print out X. X is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. You know, very simple. I'm sure all of you are, or pretty much any of you that have worked with a C-based language, you're like, yeah, that's pretty obvious. Um, the one thing that maybe, if you're coming from the C world, maybe throwing you a little bit here, is at no point in that script do I source what X is in terms of what kind of variable it is. PHP does not do strong typecasting. You can force typecasting if you want to, but it, the processor itself, will actually figure out the appropriate data type for the variable when it's first called. So in this case, the first time it's called is on the x equals zero part of the for loop. Um, so in, in this part, you will actually see that it basically the processor takes it, sees that x is zero, and will not treat it as a number. Had I taken it and said x equals, you know, the string of apple, it's going to treat it as a string variable. And then you could take it going back and forth. You know, you can't add three to Apple. It's not. It's going to give you an error. But you don't have to force and define the case type. It is certainly a good practice to go in and predefine your variables ahead of time, so you know they're all initialized to you know correct values. But you don't have to. The language is smart enough to do it for you. So that that is one thing that does throw a lot of people coming in from um, C-based languages. I'm going to get back to a few more samples here in a minute. But I'm going to talk about a couple other data types here. I'm just leaving this in the general view mode so I can swap back and forth. I'm going to be doing that fairly quite regularly. Um, the function of PHP info. This standard function is gives you extensive information about your entire PHP environment. Um, it comes built in. I highly recommend when you do a new install, you put up a web page for this and then take it down once you're, you're ready to go. Do not leave it up on a public website because it releases a lot of inf information about your server. You might not want everybody knowing. Let me show you what this looks like. Let me zoom in a little bit here. Um, this is what the PHP info looks like on that server. Um, actually, to pull up the script, this is all I have there. It's, you know, start PHP and then just calling PHP info. That's all you have to do. And what it does is it goes through and tells me everything about my installation, um, the versions I'm running, the debug. This is your handy go-to file anytime you need to know how your PHP is um, configured. One important thing to look at here, especially if you're coming on a Linux distribution, you may not have configured yourself. Um, the configuration file path, the PHP INI path, and the um, 
and the scan disk directory for additional INI files. This whole section will tell you where the PHP is actually being configured from, and it's all through the PHP INI file. I'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, also further down this file will give you information on every module you have running. So there's all kinds of information about how PHP is configured. So if you're not sure about something, you can always go pull up your PHP info and have a look at it. I do recommend you keep a printout of this or save copy of it or something or just access to it internally. So you can always go back and reference it in case there's any questions when you're dealing with a production environment. So just a little bit more about variables. Um, I, I, I'm covering a few of the basic data types here. We're going to be building a lot and using them considerably in the next class, but I just wanted to cover them a little bit before I start showing you any of the database code. Um, all you have to do to define a variable is you can set it to uh, x equals 5 and then x equals testing. That's perfectly valid code. I'm not going to get an error for it. What it will do is it will set x, the, val the variable, it will initialize when it first sees it of x, it'll set it to the value of 5 and 3 as an integer. The next line where I said x equals to testing, what it's going to do is take it, take the variable x, set it to the string testing, change it to a string type, and go on with life. It's going to, you know, it drop the value of 5 in memory, it'll take on testing, it'll effectively unset the old one, set a new one, and move on. Um, it'll play nicely, you won't have any errors. And then all you do down there is set x to 3 again for, um, and when you have x equals 3, set x to 3, then you can multiply it by 2. Um, you know, you can go back and forth and it basically will reset the variable each time. You don't need to do a manual uh, declaration of variable. Arrays are similarly not strongly typed. Um, you can have numeric arrays where you have, you know, your standard, you know, variable and then the index for it, you are 1, 2, 3, 4, et cetera. Um, if you do not actually give an index, it will automatically assign the next one available for you. The next one is you can have an associated array where it's variable and then a string. Um, you can actually have a mix where it's both numeric and associative. I don't recommend that just for good programming practices because it makes it very cumbersome in time to keep track of everything. Um, you can have multi-dimensional, um, uh, where you have, you know, uh, one index and then a numeric and then an associated array, and then you can have another numeric. You can have it as deep as you want. I don't recommend having too deep of an array. It gets confusing, but the system will certainly handle it, no problem. Um, it just depends on the nature of the data you're storing. There, there's a couple of nice functions to take a full XML schema and dump it into one huge associative array. Um, actually works pretty well to uh, browse it and to do data manipulation against XML. Objects are very common in PHP 5. They did not exist prior to that. A variable can be, you basically take a variable, you define it as an object type, and then when you do that, you get access to all the methods, variables, and other features of that object. In this case, we're taking the variable foo, we're setting it as a new object of the object type, um, and then we can run a function against it or set a variable to it, um, and then we can actually then use that in a string where we, you know, the value of object foo variable is, and then the variable foo, which is the object, and then the variable var under it. So it's going to put out the variable value of 5 here. Again, I'm going to be covering this a lot more in the next class. I just want to do a very, very quick primer on it before we move on. Okay, PHP INI file. This is the key file to control how PHP is configured. Most of the defaults are good. You probably aren't going to want to tune it too much. However, this is how you control a few key aspects. Um, this is where you adjust the memory, permissions for what can access what inside PHP, paths if you want to change INI file location or the config file or the includes or anything else, your error handling, uh, what modules you have, all that good stuff. It's all controlled through one singular text file. Um, I think of this as the on config for PHP. Uh, some Linux distributions, uh, the one I'm using, which is OpenSUSE, do this. 
split it into a uh, config.d directory. So you have your PHP INI and then added directives inside of this configuration file. Again, PHP info gives you the path. Um, if you're running this command line, you can actually pass a PHP INI um, configuration. If you want to keep several in the system, you can pass it at runtime. Um, again, pulling it up uh, on the real system, I'm actually going to pull up mine here. And what SUSE does, by the way, is split uh, versions between Apaches and the command line. So you can actually have different there. At this point, I'm just looking at the uh, web server-based one. I'm not going to go through all of the settings because there's a lot of them. One of the, the big ones that is of interest is the short open tag, which I mentioned earlier, where if you want to have it be just question, um, less than question mark to start it, you need to change this to on, which is not, at least on SUSE, is not the default. Um, some other distributions it is. I don't know why it's not consistent, but it's not. Um, just be aware of it. Uh, there's lots of different things you can configure in this. All it is is changing a straight file. Everything is well documented inside of it. Um, you can do things like changing the default, uh, you know, precision of loading point. You can do things like changing the amount of memory available. Uh, the one I want to specifically point at, um, that I want to point out for uh, Informix folks, because you're going to be adding in the extension directory, you need to have a look, uh, adding in an extension for Informix, you need to have a look at the extension directory um, configuration, and you may need to tune it if you're putting the uh, the module file somewhere else. It'll tell you during the install where it goes. I'll go through that in a moment. But this is where you can configure your extension directory if you want them to be stored somewhere else. There's a lot to this file. I'm not going to go through it. Um, I just wanted to mention it's here. If you're running this on a production server, I would highly recommend you go and look through it, especially at the memory limitations and pieces where it's actually doing things like session paths and places where it stores cooking infor or um, session information, you may want to move that somewhere else. There's a lot to it. Uh, if there's a lot of interest, I will go deeper into it in a future webcast, but for right now, I'm just mentioning it here. Okay, a little bit uh, on the modules now for PHP, and I know I'm going through a lot of information quickly. It's part of why we do include um, the replay of the webcast and the slides so you can go back and reference this. The next part we're going to talk about is PECL, the online package repository. If you've used Perl, you sh you're probably familiar with the CPAN repository. works similarly where this is an online repository where people that are running third-party add-ons to PHP can host them in a consistent way, and then you have a web or a command-line-based tool to automatically download, install, and configure tools with, um, the pieces with. With uh, OpenSUSE, you need to make sure PHP Devil uh, package is installed for this, so you actually get the Peckle button, um, the Peckle binary. Originally, it's called Pear. They moved it to PECL. I don't know why, but they did. Um, a couple of things that may be of interest to people on the call here. The big one is the PDO and Formix driver we'll be talking about in a moment. Uh, the next thing is Excel and Word support. A lot of times with doing business applications, you need something that will either read or write to like an Excel key. Um, it works quite well. I use that one quite a lot. There's actually a couple available, but, um, but I've, had, I've had good success with a number of them. So you can get the packages for those. Um, Clucene, uh, some of you may be familiar with the BPS search index for Informix. Um, that's actually based on the open source Clucene library. There is a third-party package for PHP to include that uh, functionality into your code if you want to embed it somewhere. There's all kinds of graphing utility you can include. So if you want to make the nice pretty graphs uh, dynamically, you can do that. Um, if you want script caching, so you actually will take it, pre-process uh, scripts, have the system pre-process them for you, 
and be able to serve them directly out of memory rather than have it run each time. There's several different options for that available, some of which are built in, some of which are third party. Um, it is something I highly recommend if you expect a high traffic website. All of this is at pecl.php.net. Um, Google is really your friend here if you are looking for a particular package. PDO, uh, this is your standardized, this came out in PHP 5. It is a standardized database driver layer. Um, for those of you that may, or anyone that has touched older versions of PHP knows that each database had its own separate driver for connecting to a database. You actually have three different ones for MySQL. You had an old one for Informix. You had like two for Oracle. You had a, you know, each one, and you had one for DB2, et cetera, et cetera. Each one worked a little differently, had different commands, different syntax. And so trying to port uh, code was a nightmare. And even trying to write code between different databases was really painful because you'd start using the function, realize it's the wrong one, realize the syntax is different, and you just have time to switch back and forth. What they did was they pack it, decided to write a standard set of functions um, in one object mo model uh, for all the databases. Um, this is what we mainly want to be uh, using. Um, ODBC can be troublesome. I include that just because trying to write the old one with the, the old standard was using the ODBC driver. Um, a lot of people do that to have cross database compatibility for code. It just got problematic trying to keep it straight, especially on Unix um, for multiple different environments. Trying to hook ODBC up against like SQL Server, for example, becomes really problematic on the Unix system. Um, there was the old Informix driver that wasn't really stable and had all kinds of bugs and hadn't been supported since Informix was in version 7. Um, so there's all kinds of problems with the old model. The new one is making sure everything is standard, everything is handled the same, much, much cleaner. Um, IBM supports two different drivers. One is PDO Informix and one is PDO IBM. Um, the other nice thing PDO includes is proper error handling. The old ones were absolutely hit or miss on what you get back and be able to do with errors. Um, the new version of PDO means that everything is handled cleanly and consistently. Okay, PDO IBM versus PDO Informix. This has been kind of an issue that's been running around for a while. Both are widely available. Both are very available in Tackle. Um, Originally, PDO and Formix came out first, and then the development stopped on it. Um, and IBM tried to move everyone over to PDO IBM. The problem is the IBM driver was using DRDA, which meant that, which is the newer communications protocol for Informix. It also works with DB2, which is why it's called PDO IBM, as well as some of the other IBM um, databases. So you can use the same driver to connect to multiple database types, which is nice. The downside, though, is it only supports version of Informix 11 and later, and it will uh, does not fully support all of the Informix functionality. Uh, I know they have been working on it, but I know some of the uh, specific Informix functions and data types do not correctly work. Um, you need to read up on that if you think that's an issue. The other thing that came into play was OAT. Um, if any one of you have interest in that, we just put up the webcast from last month about getting up and running with OAT. But OAT uses the PDO Informix driver, which has been a big driving force in making that the standard in the Informix community and also giving it some very needed upgrades. So it's been getting some patches. If you have not upgraded it in a while and you are on PHP, please go ahead and update. The last one came out in June of last year. Uh, if you're not on that, it's one, version 131. Please upgrade it. There are some very nice bug fixes in there. Um, I have been told that PDO IBM and PDO Informix do not always run stably on the same system, so you do need to choose. Um, I know that's been worked on. I haven't tested that in the latest version, so that may be resolved by now. But I've been told that um, before. Uh, the other thing is, because I know there are probably some people on here with older versions of Informix somewhere in their environment, PDO Informix will work on any version of Informix. 
that I am aware of that's running any version of IDS that's running. Um, however, I do know people that have gotten this to run against SE as well. Um, it's not officially supported, but I have, been t I have seen it work. So, a couple of ways to install it. Uh, you can compile it into the engine when you actually build PHP. Uh, it takes a while to do. I don't really recommend it this day and age unless you are, need something where it's completely compiled in for some reason. You can install through Peckle, which doesn't actually work right now. Um, I will explain why. And you can compile it as a module, which is the way I recommend. So compile into PHP. I'm going to skip over this, but if you ever want to, here's information on it. Installing from Peckle. How it should work is you should be able to run Peckle install PDO and Formix. It should automatically download, configure, and install it. It doesn't right now. Manually building the module. Um, what you do is you download the latest version of PDO and Formix from the Peckle website, unpack it. There will be a binary added by the PHP development package, or if you build it from source, it'll be there, called PHP IZE. This will actually take your uh, configuration files, build them all correctly. It's sort of like an autoconf if you're familiar with it. Um, you then configure it and make it and make install. Um, you then need to add the line extension equals PDO underscore informix.so to your INI, your PHP.ini file. Um, again, it'll be a DLL if it's on Windows. Um, and there's a fairly major bug that we have run into before um, where, and I'm actually going to demonstrate this quickly. I'm not going to go into full uh, explanation on it, but what happens is the configuration is not fully set up to look for the correct directory for this file called PD, PHP PDO driver.8 and the configuration bails out. Uh, this looks a little complex. I promise it's not. I'm going to demonstrate it. So I've already downloaded the file from Peckle, um, and it's very, very small. It's, you know, 67K. Again, nothing up my sleeve. I'm, I'm actually building this right now. So what you have here when you unpack it, you'll notice there's no configuration. Um, configure file. So when you run PHP IZE, it'll go through, check your PHP version, and build the correct, uh, all the files you need to actually then build the environment, um, build the module. So I now have all my configure files. And what I'm going to do is start out by sourcing in my Informix um, environment. This is mainly to get an Informix there. So it's just making sure that I have Informixter set and path set and all the other normal stuff, to, just because it will use ESQLC to build. And then all I have to do is have to run configure, and it's going to blow up on me. Um, so you see here that it says checking for PDO includes configure error, cannot find PHP PDO driver dot H. You may run, this may run fine for you. This may not run fine view. It depends on the um, Linux distribution or Unix system you are on, whether this will work or not. Um, the reason for this error is because they hard-coded where it expects to find that file and not all distributions put in the same place. So what you do to fix this, okay, do a find on your user directory. This is how I normally do it. Again, if you're on Windows, this is all really moot point. Um, but what we're doing is just looking for that file, and it's going to be, and in this case, user include PHP 5, EXP, PDO, PDO driver. So I'm going to copy it so I have that path set. And I'm, what you do at this point is open up and edit your configure file. If you have not messed with configure files before, don't worry, this isn't that scary. And what you'll find is on, and it depends on your version, but normally it's about uh, line 4673. You can just search for the PHP PDO driver.h. You'll find this little section here. And you'll see it, you know, looking, checking for PDO includes. And what it does is it's looking for the file in um, one of three places. However, for us, it's not in those three places. So what we need to do is add two more lines that look just like the ones above. 
LIF test dash F. If you have not done shell scripting before, just copy and paste what's above. And what we're actually going to do is tell it to check for the file here, then set the PDO include path equals, and it's going to be up to the point where it's slash EXT. So all we're doing is telling it to check for the file there. If it's there, set the PDO underscore include underscore path to this um, directory. It's just that they hard-coded part of the configuration and haven't fixed it yet. I'm hoping on the next release that they will fix this. So we reconfigure. Notice it's gotten passed. It is configured correctly. I'm going to do a make. Um, I will let you know make test does not work on all distributions. It depends on how PHP is actually built. Again, something I hope they will fix. On uh, mine, it's going to give me an error because it can't without the CLI um, SAPI. It's just how uh, SUSE builds PHP where it splits the command line versus the web-based um, version of PHP, so it doesn't quite know how to build with it. So I'm assuming it's good. I will test it in a moment. Um, but so the make test may or may not work for you. But you make install, and all the make install actually does is copies the .so file, the PH, uh, it's called pdo underscore informix.so, and copies it to the PHP's extensions directly, which is this long string here. So the only other part we need to do is add it now into our PHP INI. On SUSE, it adds an extensions directory, or a, um, in, sorry, a configuration include directory for you, which is really, really nice to be able to keep all of this sane. And what there is is um, there's a conf D directory, and you notice that there's all these different files, including pdo.ini. All these are just different extensions um, telling it to add into the system. When PHP runs, it just scans this directory and um, runs all the directives inside of here. So all we need to do is create one more for Informix. And you need to have an INI extension. And all you had to put in there is extension equals PDO underscore Informix dot SO. So what it's going to do is it'll read that directory. We'll see the PDO Informix dot INI file. We'll read it and tell it, oh, I need to include the PDO Informix extension when I run. Um, one note here, if you, your web server with PHP is already running, um, it means PDO, PHP is already run in, um, loaded into memory. It will not pick up a change to this until you bounce that. Um, you don't need to stop and start it, but at least restart that Apache instance. Well, it is stopping and starting it, but um, you need to bounce it to basically reuse the um, PHP and INI. So I'm going to do that real quick. This is um, standard in it, the Apache script. And now let's check to make sure PHP is, or Informix is there. So if you run PHP-M, this will give you the list of current modules. And you'll notice here uh, at the top we have PDO underscore Informix. Um, also notice PDO SQL Lite is here, PDO is here, um, which is sort of the, the master of all of it. I will also mention here, just because I, I want to do a quick sidebar on this, um, now that we have it up and running on Unix, getting it running on Windows is not an easy task. There is not a pre-built module for Windows, and you have to have a full uh, development environment set up on Windows to be able to compile it from source. It's not an easy task to do. Um, generally on Windows, what I recommend is rather than running PDO in Formix, just run the PDO ODBC module and point it to um, a Windows uh, version of the CSDK uh, Informix driver. It works almost as well, the slight, I mean, very, very, very minor performance dip. Um, you know, you'll be losing much more performance running Windows over Unix, but you're not going to, there's not much of a performance hit to run it as ODBC. You will save yourself a lot of headache, and all the commands will be the same. So, just if you're, if you're an in, on a Windows environment, just translate every, any time I say the Informix driver, just hit, translate it to the ODBC driver. And if you're not running Informix, I know there's some people on here that may be on different databases. 
just substitute your PDO driver accordingly, the command will be the same. So again, this is the uh, information on what you change. Um, it just, if you run into that bug, it may be something where it's, it depends on the distribution, the version of the distribution, whether you'll hit it or not. It just depends on where those include files are located. So, PDO actual connection here. Um, what you do is you set up a variable, I like to call it DB8 for database handle. You can have multiple database, you can have multiple database handles open at the same time. Um, you tell it a new PDO object. This is why I wanted to mention the object in there. And then the first, and then it's a big long string. Um, well, there's two, two ways. If you have ODBC set up, you can tell it to use the Informix driver, colon, and a DSN name. Um, and then you just give it that, and it will run it from the ODBC file, um, the ODBC.ini file. Or what I do more commonly is just have one big long string telling all the connection information. So the first thing here is your database type. So if you're not running Informix, you're running MySQL, that would be MySQL. If you're running it on Windows, it would be ODBC, what have you. You then have colon, host is your, then equals to your host name. And then each of these is separated by a semicolon. Um, service is equal to your service name. Your database is equal to your database name. Server is equal to your Informix server. Um, note you really want this to be your um, to be your TCP connection and your protocol. You can do it through IPC, you know, through the shared memory. I don't necessarily recommend it just because it's easier to manage web applications through TCP connections. Um, and then now, once you've done that, it connects at that point. This is when you create the PDO object, that is when the connection happens. So it'll you know either work or it won't work at that point. Once it's created, you now have your database handle that you can do things with. In this case, we're actually going to set an attribute to it. So we're actually setting how we want the database handle to function. In this case, and I'll explain what this means, um, we're going to set the error mode to an ex to exception. So if there's an error, it throws an exception. Otherwise, it's just going to um, exit out of the system entirely. So quick example of what this looks like. So, and, and do note the string needs to all be on one line. If you have a new line in it, it will give you an error. Um, so what I've done here is I've set up some variables just to store stuff ahead of time. Um, username, password, my Informix server, the service, the host, the database, and the protocol. And all I have here is one string where it's PDO, Informix, colon, host is my host, service, database, the server. Um, I know there's a little bit of word wrapping here. Um, protocol, username, and then, and then um, in the string, and then comma, username, comma, password. So if you don't have the username and password included here, it'll connect as the current user, which can be fine if it's on the command line, um, but be in mind, keep in mind that if you're running it as a web server, it's going to run as the web server user. So it'll be trying to connect as that user account, which may be good. You just give the permissions then to the web server user, but keep in mind the security implications. Under, once we actually have that connected, um, the set attribute, we're saying the error mode to error exception. And what these are here are a series of the PDO, ATDR, ER mode. Um, these are defined constants that come packaged with PDO telling it how to actually handle specific situations. So the attribute error mode is um, a defined static or a statically defined ver um, value that when it's recalling attribute, it's telling it, okay, we want to take the error mode, and then the second one is, what do we do with error mode? In this case, we probably pull an exception if there is one. The second one here, this is important with informants. Um, other databases don't behave quite the same way. I highly recommend you do this with Informix for your own sanity. The second one is ATTR case, attribute case. This is actually what case will associated arrays come back when you're returning values. Um, by default, most versions of Informix, when you pull it back through PHP, and I have no idea why they did this by default, but all the variables come back in uppercase. So when you're returning a value, 
you have to, if you're giving an associated array or an object, you have to type out all of the uh, column names in uppercase. It gets really, really irritating unless you, unless you have a coding standard of that. So you can modify this and tell it, I want to return all the column names as lowercase. That's all that's telling you to do and then connects connected correctly. So again, all you have to do is run PHP and then the script and it connects correctly. And again, show you there's nothing at my sleeve, going to change the password here to one that's not correct, rerun it, and you see that PHP fatal error, and this is what an exception looks like. Um, you know, it gives you a big long informix error, but the important part here is what I've highlighted, um, incorrect password or user informix at, you know, host is not known to the database server. It's because I have the wrong password. It tells me the error, the file here it errored on, the line it errored on, you know, all kinds of information about what just went wrong. Um, but the nice thing is, you know, I fix that, I rerun it. I now have a db.php file that connects to the database. It's done. I don't even have to think about it. I now can include that wherever else I need to in my code to connect to the database. And it's already set up. It's, it's nice to do. So just a couple other things about the PDO. Um, just a bit about the set attribute. Again, there's attribute case, the error mode, the string of five fetches, which really isn't necessary anymore. I included just because some people are interested. It just changes how the um, data is actually returned. So all of these are on the database handle. Um, a couple of basic queries here. I'm just going to show you in code because I prefer this in code. So I've got, um, for those of you familiar with it, I have stores demo set up in the database. And what we have here is a, I require one. Um, this is a very nice function. I can also use include if I wanted to. Require once and then a file in PHP will include that file exactly one time. So if it already sees it loaded into memory, it will not load it again. So you don't have to worry about getting errors saying files already loaded if you maybe have an, you know, several different files that all include the same uh, master file. So I then set the variable SQL line to the my SQL statement, select uh, menu code description from stock for unit prices less than 250. Um, the next part I do here is I prepare the statement. Um, so it actually takes it, it takes um, that statement against the database handle, calls the function prepare, so it takes it, prepares it against the database, and then um, sets that prepared statement to the variable STH. So STH is now a statement handle um, attached to the database. And all I have to do is run execute against that statement handle, and it's now executed the data, um, the, uh, the query on the database. And then what I can do is the next line down here, the row equals, is I'm actually do calling a fetch from the database. This is going to return the first row. And the argument I pass here, PDO colon colon fetch underscore num, this is again another um, statically defined variable or statically defined value, which tells it to return it as a numerical indexed array. So what I get, and I store it as a variable row, which note row is now an array when it's returned. So row one, um, you know, and then it shows me row, zero, row index zero, which is going to be the menu code, row index space, row index one, which is the description, and then a new line. Then I'm going to call fetch again, um, the second line down here, fetch PDO of fetch associ, which tells it to fetch as an associated array. This is why I went to a few of the variable types earlier. Um, print row two, uh, note I do have to concatenate these strings here. Um, so I have row two, and then I tell it to return the value of menu code. Um, the menu code here knows it's in lowercase. Had I not include that, included that um, case lower uh, add database attribute, it would have all had to been uppercase, which just gets annoying in my opinion to write. Um, concatenate a space and then concatenate the description and then new one. Third one down here, I, I fetch the third row. Um, fetch with PDO fetch object. So this time I am returning it to the variable row 
and row is now an object of the type um, of the actual return type, which what it does is it's an object with a variable set for every column name. So there's a variable for menu code and a variable for description. I'm able to embed those into the line. So all you do is it's, so effectively to boil this down, um, takes that statement, it X prepares it, runs it, and then fetches th the first three rows and then displays them in different ways. And I let that connect correctly in there. So the first one, it turns the HRO, baseball, then HSK, baseball, bad, is the description. Three is NRG, tennis racket. So it's a very simple fetch statement. Um, you could use a while, a while loop or uh, all kinds of different ways to actually return all of the rows in one, um, one fell swoop if you want to. You could also, there's a separate function rather than fetch, which is fetch all, that returns everything in one big array if you want to work with it. Um, we'll be covering all more, we'll be going more into this um, later on in future courses, but I just wanted to cover the basics so you can go in there, set up PHP, set up the Informix driver, put together a couple of simple queries, and just make sure it actually does return data. Um, running low on time here. Um, there's PD, I'm going to talk more about this, but I just included here. You can bind parameters. Highly, highly, highly recommend this. If you are still embedding uh, user input directly into SQL statements, uh, please, please, please reconsider it. It is too easy to put in uh, negative stuff into your database. Um, when you use a bound parameter, you cannot inject data in there um, because it knows exactly what data type it's going to be and what the bounds are. You can't break out of it. Um, I, I will just do a one disclaimer that there is one exception to that if you're using, dyna um, if you're using dynamic store procedures that actually build the SQL inside the store procedure on time. Those are new and later versions of 11. I get, um, Hold on that and during one class someone brought up that point. But that's a really rare exception. I've yet to run into a client actually doing that. Um, that's the only time a sort of you could get around that. Um, on your standard SQL statements, your, if you use a bound parameter, you're not going to have SQL injection, which is really the biggest um, attack that happens these days for websites. Um, it'll also properly handle new line. You don't have to worry about any kind of strange characters coming in from different character sets and not being stored correctly. It makes life much, much easier. It also is faster if doing multiple inserts or updates or uh, multiple uh, calls on the same statement. So binding, all you do is um, to bind on a select. You basically tell it uh, after you've executed, you bind the column number to a variable and you tell it the type and then you fetch, and then the variable here will be stored with the value. Um, we'll be dealing all more of this, so I am kind of rushing through it. Um, different types of ways to bind it to a parameter. I will tell you, you know, 90 time, 99 times out of 100, it'll determine it automatically. The number of times I have to define the, um, the type of data is, with Informix is very, very rare. It normally picks it up very nicely. Um, you can actually take it and for uh, the actual SQL, you can bind a parameter, you can basically set a parameter here uh, by using a question mark. And so what you tell it is update user set last IP equals question mark, where user ID equals question mark, and password equals question mark. Um, I never actually used this code in production, but you could. Um, you prepare it, and then you actually set up an array of the three values you're putting in there and then execute. And what it will do is it'll map those three va variables and the values of them from, uh, you know, IP will go into the first one, username going to the second one, password going to the third one. It'll execute, putting those in directly, and Formix knows um, where, the uh, where the boundaries start and end for each of these variables, what data type they are. We'll map them correctly, and you can't actually do anything, you know, funky with the uh, quotes or anything else. If anyone is curious about the SQL injection, I do do a talk at the Informix conference uh, most years on security. I also am going to be putting out some more information about application security in the future. And there's lots of information on Google about exactly what a SQL injection is if you've not worked with them or not been exposed to them previously. 
I like security, and I like to think about security from the ground up. So it is an important feature when dealing with web applications. Just there are some more examples here of different types to bind parameters. I'm not going to go through them, but they're here in the notes. Um, different types of fetching data. Again, there's the fetch, fetch all. And you can fetch just a single column if you want to. Um, please do not just do select star from. We all know the overhead that it includes. There's a quick thing here on error handling. Um, I know I'm running low on time here. Um, PHP 5 introduced a try-catch situation. If you've not worked with try-catch before, it tries to execute whatever in the block. If it fails, if there's an error anywhere in there, almost simply an exception thrown, it'll catch it and then allow you to do whatever you want with the catch block. This is wonderful in database land because what you do is you put everything inside a transaction in your try statement. Um, if the try gets to the end of the statement, you commit it. If it hits the error block, you roll it back. So you can get have you know 10, 15 different you know statements and some of which may be uh, logic statements, some of them which may be database statements. And if any of them fail, it rolls it all back. You don't have to trust. Um, manual rollbacks or do anything else, it'll automatically do it for you. So there, I will, we will be handling that quite a bit more in future ones. There's a little bit of information in here on the notes on the different error codes for Informix. A um, couple of links that are relevant here. The first one is php.net. This is the PHP homepage. Highly, highly recommend you go check it out. Um, I normally don't bother with, you know, a language homepage because it's usually you go and download the language and then move on to Google for help. Um, the PHP.net, the guidebook it has it with it, specifically the reference guide on the site, will give you extensive information on any function, the syntax, and then if you read the comments, people have put some really, really good examples of where they've used the functions and different ways to use them. So if there's anything you aren't sure what you know how to what the syntax is of the function or what function I could use for this. Just Google it. You can also go to php.net slash function name. It'll pull it right up for you. Um, the next one is zen.com or framework.zen.com. They put all out a full um, PHP framework. They're also one of the biggest developers of the PHP language. Um, they put, so the framework is out there. I have not personally used it much. Um, I know some people love it. Some people are not a big fan and they find it too constrictive. If you like pre-made framework for applications, they have some good ones. They also have lots of good information about um, develop or IDEs for PHP. I will also tell you Eclipse works really well if you want a graphical IDE for it, uh, for the language. IAUG.org slash open source. Um, they have a whole set of open source products and uh, packages that are trying to be ported or already ported to Informix. A lot of those are PHP. Um, the next one is your just links to the PDO, uh, Informix, and IBM uh, drivers. Google also pulled these up real quick. The last one is open admin pool. Um, this is the OAT system. Uh, if you're not familiar with it and you run Informix, check out the last uh, webcast we put out. Um, goes into it in quite a bit of depth on getting it up and running and then a little bit about the system. It also is running PHP on the Informix, PDO Informix driver. And also I will include that if you have any problems getting this up and running or just really want to get started with PHP quickly, you can just install OAT. Um, OAT has Apache, PHP, and the PDO driver all included. I would not recommend you run a production system on this because it is a bit of an outdated version of PHP and Apache, uh, so not the latest versions, but for 99% of what you'd want to do, and especially for either development or just to learn the language, it's a really easy way to get up and, and running. If you want to be up and running even quicker, um, IBM has out a full virtual appliance for Informix, so you'll actually get Informix Developer Edition. OAT's already set up, server's already set up on on Linux, so all you got to do is download that and you can be up and running in just a matter of minutes after the download with um, PHP if you want to get started with it. So one other thing I will include here, and I apologize not having a slide for it, um, is for anyone that doesn't know that's an Informix user, uh, end of April there's the IIUG conference coming up. Um, 
it's going to be in Miami, Florida. It is the best technical conference for Informix people out there. Meet the developers, meet the the folks actively using it. Um, either the sysadmins, the DBA, the um, developers. A huge number of Informix people will be there. You know, come learn a lot from some fantastic classes. I will be teaching on this uh, there and some real hands-on pieces. Um, so check out IEG.org for more information on that. Um, so th this is where I'm going to stop today. I'm going to put it out there for any questions. If you have questions, um, please go ahead and put them in as a message. Um, And we'll arrange for anyone to do that. Just going to uh, mention the upcoming classes. A lot of this, this first class, I touched on a couple of the basics of PHP. If you have time and want to play with the language, start, you know, do put together, get it, get your system up and running. If you want to learn it, you know, try to get to, you know, Hello World up and running. Um, go right ahead. What we're going to be, what my intention is for the next few classes is this was the you get your server up and running. You test to make sure it works. Um, you know, you can see that you can access their web page with PHP info. You can see that you can connect to Informix database. Um, so your all the pieces are now in place. The next class is where we're actually going to get into the code. Um, we're going to get into you know how do you write code? How you know how is everything defined? How do I write some basic functions? Um, it's largely going to be the command line. Uh, to next time, and then we get into the web pieces where it gets really fun, and you know that's where you start being able to do some very very cool things very quickly that you can then show off. Um, you can get a. I, I will tell you once your experience with PHP, you can go from you know effectively nothing to you know a full featured uh, application running against multiple tables, handling data correctly, everything else. In a matter of a couple of hours, it does not take very long once you get used to it. And then you can then spend all that extra time making everything look pretty and including your Web 2.0 stuff and making graphs and charts and everything else that makes upper management, you know, look very fondly upon you. Um, so, at any rate, does anyone have any questions? Um, for the okay, I got a question here from um, Ernest. What it will um, it will complement? He basically asked, um, will it complement shell scripting and run under cron tab? Yes, it will. Um, once you actually have in PHP installed and you have the PHP binary, um, you can call that from a command line either inside a shell script or even directly from cron. Just give it you know PHP. Uh, and then the path to the X, or the PHP script you want to run. Um, I actually do on a number of my application or my actual systems that I both I do application development and sysadmin for. Actually, have all of my Informix backups running through PHP. Um, so for actual um, table level backups, um, I have a series of dynamic PHP scripts all crawled from cron. All play very nicely together. Go out, query the tables, pull a quick copy of them, compress it, and store it off. Um, all using the same um, functions and driver connection as I do for the web system. So yes, it works really nicely. Um, PHP is more for uh, a comment here about it for more for Linux and not so much for AX, Sun, HP, Windows, etc. I, I, di I disagree with that. It's um, the PHP itself is, you know, an open source language. It runs very, very nicely on Windows. It comes with a very nice installer. If you're a Windows person, you'll have no problem getting it up and running. Um, on Unix, uh, especially Sun or on Solaris, which is the one I've uh, worked with it on, it is available. Whether I have not worked with the latest Oracle versions of Solaris on version 10, um, they did actually have through Sun Freeware a copy of PHP. I also compiled my own, ran fine, it actually ran very very nicely. Um, it just it's most associated with Linux, but it is certainly available and runs very nicely on just about any um, 
any major operating system you want to run at all. Um, and all of the PHP scripts will be on advanced data tools. Uh, I'm going to compress it up right after this call. We'll include it with the uh, presentation files, and then in a couple of days you will find the uh, replay posted uh, from the, web, the call itself. So does anyone have any other questions? Um, is it best to run from the central server to all others for less Apache and PHP install? That's a very, very good question. Um, it, and, I, and my answer is going to be a little complex. It's just like, should I run with a single I, Informix instance? Um, it entirely depends on your environment. If you have something where things are very, need to be very locked down and very, you know, very, very separated between application A and application B, it may make sense to keep up two different web servers. If um, you, you know, it's easier and management prefers a single point where you're, you only have one hard, piece of hardware dedicated to your web server, then it probably makes sense just to have it on that one rather than having a separate install somewhere else just for one little application um, that's managed. But do keep in mind, if your Apache is set up to run entirely as one user, which is the default, um, if someone compromises one application on that server, you know, they could, and it doesn't, this has nothing to do with PHP. This is just how web servers work. If it's running as, you know, the Apache user, if someone's able to get access to that Apache user, they get access to everything that Apache user can access. So if you have, well, this is what I've seen more often than anything else. If you have a case where you have something that an intern wrote that ended up becoming production software, which I'm sure nobody on this call has ever had happen in their environment. Um, and it's sitting out there and hasn't been touched in five years. And on the same server, on the same user, you have your banking uh, application running. You're probably going to have some compliance issues or real, some real security issues if that, um, you know, intern's application is compromised because they could then access the files for the banking software. That is a real case for having um, it segmented out, have different um, copies installed. It all depends on your environment. Also, if you're running a, you know, you're running Yahoo or you're running some, you know, big, heavy, heavily used PHP site, you probably want more than one server. And Apache will very nicely with PHP cluster and, you know, set up, you can set up full proxy systems, all kinds of different configurations to um, be able to better do load balancing on the same set of scripts with PHP. That's where, where I say it scales, it really does scale. You just need to put some real, um, you know, you do have to put some time and effort into figuring out the, what works best for you. Some people are just happy to throw a big box at it, and for many people, that will handle it. Um, the other thing I will just mention with you know, deployment, um, Apache and PHP themselves take up very little memory. Um, you can run it. I, I run it on a, on a um, ARM box that has, you know, 256 megs of RAM with plenty of room to spare. Um, it does not take up a lot of RAM unless you are running applications, particularly in PHP, that you're doing something where you're keeping huge amounts of data in memory. Um, but most of the time, uh, you can run it on very small footprints, so it's not a lot of overhead. It's more of just compliance rules. So, are there any other questions? Okay, well, thank you all very much. Um, my email is on uh, on the last slide, first slide. I, I tend to be pretty reachable. So if you have any questions, please let me know. If you are planning on going through the other classes, I really, really recommend um, you get an environment up. Uh, running it in VMware is more than fine, just because you will probably, as much as you may like hearing my voice, you probably will still want to actually do some of the coding yourself, because really there is no um, real substitute for actually getting your hands dirty with this sort of stuff and actually getting in there and uh, doing some of the coding yourself and playing with it and toying with it. Um, so I do highly recommend just pull, you know, get together a virtual image or get the virtual appliance from IBM, um, the Informix virtual appliance, or just install it on your desktop, your laptop, whatever you want to. Again, it's not large over, you know, it's not a big overhead. Um, so it's not a huge issue, you know, big issue there. Just keep in mind, if you're running it with the web server, you're going to have a web server up there. 
and just keep that in mind if it's a production system, if that's any kind of security policy violation. Um, I just like to keep people, make sure people keep that in mind. I don't want anybody's security team coming back and saying, you know, well, you told our guys to you know, put it up. No, I didn't. Um, put it up wherever it's appropriate. It's not going to take a lot of resources. So thank you all for being on. Hopefully you'll all be on the, the upcoming ones. Um, and please let me know if you have any questions. At the same time, if there's anything in particular with PHP you want to make sure I cover, let me know. I'm still finishing up developing the upcoming webcast, so if you have particular topics that you want to make sure I hit, please let me know. Thank you very much.